Coach, it seems like I asked you uh, about this last year, and I know you gave me the human joystick answer and, and, and that saying you can't make guys play the way you want them to play. But it just seems like when, when Rams is aggressive and, and on his game that – and I know you got several guys that can spark this team and get the team going, but it just seems like it's, it's different offensively when he's tuned in and, and aggressive. you see that same thing? Yeah, that's a – on point observation, uh, I feel like when he's playing his best, if, when he's setting the tone out front defensively, they usually end up being good possessions for us. And then on the offensive end, when uh, he's just stubborn in terms of getting in the paint. And then when he gets in the paint, really working with him on not jumping too past. Um, um, ju uh, jumping to find a pass, but he certainly um, is better when, like most players are, when he plays off two feet. Uh, it's okay to jump to pass, but you can't jump and try to find. You have to have a plan when you leave your feet that way. And he's really gotten himself in, in better shape. You know, it's always been a struggle that way for him. You know, he was hurt last year and it took a long time to get back in shape. And then with his surgery this summer, uh, the same thing, and I know it's easy to say, and you would think that you know he should be in tip-top shape by now, but uh, for whatever reason, um, it, it's just a struggle sometimes to get him where he needs to be. And he's such like most players, he's a much better player when you know he's fresher and, and doesn't have to fight um, you know the shape type of situation. So um, yeah, we we love when he's motored up and, and playing both ends and. You know, he gives us so much more than the stat line uh, offers at the end of the game. We'll go to John, second row to coaches left. What's going on, Chris? Uh, I know you've, you've been talking about Josh a lot. I mean, for good reason. I know you've been asked about him a lot, too. But, I mean, from when you knew that, obviously, he was going to be coming here, like, did, did you ever think that he could make such an impact so quickly to this program? And how much of a kind of surprise has it been for you? You know, I try not to project things like that um, because you just never know. You know, certainly you assign kids with the thought process being that they can impact the program in a positive way. Um, more often than not, freshmen take a little bit longer than maybe an older transfer or even a junior college player just because of the experience. And so you just never know. Um, certainly we've been pleasantly surprised at the least um, with, with Josh and how he's impacted us in a, in a very short time period. I would imagine if you asked him, um, he's not surprised. You know, he's one of those kids that has got great confidence, um, but he carries himself in, in a way where it's not boastful uh, or anything like that. It just is what it is for him. And he's been preparing for these opportunities, you know, the majority of his life, at least his, his athletic life. And um, I don't think him or his family is probably surprised. And, um, you know, did I expect him to lead us in scoring and, and have the kind of uh, stretches? Uh, no, I can't sit here and, and say that. But uh, it's be definitely been a big shot in the arm for us. We'll go front row to Justin. Uh, I don't believe we talked about this over the weekend, but um, DJ obviously finished plus 41 on – on Saturday, and, and more often than not this, this year, even though when his offense isn't at its best, you guys are better with him on the court. What, what has he been doing you know, with, without scoring all the time to, to make himself valuable and useful for you guys? Yeah, DJ had a really nice game. Uh, I'm really happy for him, and hopefully that will you know, boost his confidence uh, in the near future. And, and just when you see that ball go through the net, you know, it's just something about it that makes you feel better when you're getting ready to shoot the, the next one. But uh, like you said, you know, he provides us uh, a lot on both ends of the court. His length, his experience, his speed. Um, you know, he's really good in transition. And then defensively, you know, he can guard, you know, one through four. And the way, you know, our scheme is right now, uh, it's invaluable to have guys on the court that have – the willingness and, and the ability to be able to guard, you know, mismatches, if you will. And um, and then he just, you know, he, he just understands, you know, how to play. And um, he's been there, done that, and, and we got a, a lot of belief in him. We'll go back to Paul and then John again. I thought we 
talk about this a lot with Tolu, but any any kind of not so much a time frame for when he returns to games, but what's what's his next step as far as getting back in practice? Um, he has a scan scheduled for Thursday, so the day after our next game, uh, he'll have a scan, and at that point, you know, I'll know a lot more in terms of when he'll transition back to practice. But I think in the next couple of days, you know, he'll he'll be doing some five on zero things with us um, in the half court for sure. And then maybe even in the full court, he won't he's still not allowed to have any contact or anything like that. But you know, he's he's been shooting, you know, on his own and getting some free throw free throws in, some jump shots, some, you know, stuff around the basket, just one on zero. Um, so we're hoping, you know, fingers crossed that we get a good update on Thursday, and then I'll know more then. Go back to John. Um, I was going to kind of even ask about Tolu, but in terms of a attacking kind of rehab stand, I mean, for, for a guy like that who's had kind of injuries in the past, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that can be a, a tolling and taxing thing. How do you think he's kind of responded to it, uh, you know, in the last couple of weeks, especially as maybe a return could be, you know, sooner if potentially? Yeah. Unfortunately, um, for his sake, he has a lot of experience in this matter. So he knows what it takes. And, you know, most of us obviously in this room know him fairly well. He's been around and everybody, you know, talks about his work ethic. And it's the same uh, that I've seen, you know, going through this injury situation with him. The first 48 hours, you know, that was that was rough. Um, you know, he was he was pretty down and uh, took a big toll on him mentally and, and, and certainly the, the surgery, et cetera. But ever since then, he's had an unbelievable mindset. Uh, there, there's a couple times when, like game day, you know, he, he gets a little, little down because, you know, he's ready to play. You know, he, he feels the energy and the vibe. And certainly you work, work, work. And then on game day, you know, you get to go out there and perform. And um, them are the only days I've seen him where, you know, it kind of bothers him. But other than that, um, you know, he's, he's a model uh, student athlete when, in terms of, you know, his, his appointments, his rehab, his uh, willingness to come in, you know, over and over and over daily and, and work with Andrew Kegley, our, our trainer, uh, who's done an excellent job uh, with, with all of our guys, but including Tolu. We'll go front row right to Benjamin. Now looking ahead now to Wednesday's game with Murray State, I know historically a real strong uh, mid-major program, uh, some strong offensive performances from them this year, even though they haven't uh, had uh, gotten off to a great record. So, yeah, what do, what do you see out of them in terms of the challenges that they're going to present for you? Yeah, like you said, uh, you know, historically a uh, great mid-major program, had got a really good players and coaches that have come through Murray State, and they have another good one in Steve Prohm. I know him well. He's uh, – a great guy and a really good coach, and he's you know getting getting that thing going again uh, down there for in a second stint. But um, they're just very well schooled. Um, they, they try to play mistake free basketball. You know they're real solid on the defensive end. They're just really going to try to you know play in the gaps and and you know almost dare you to, to shoot the ball and um, you know try to protect you know the painted area as best they can and then. What they're known for is, is the other end. I mean, they run uh, as many sets as probably anyone we've faced thus far, and, and they really pride themselves on their on their pace and their execution. And, um, you know, they share the ball really, really well, and um, they're very well schooled, like I said, on both ends. But that offensive end will, will be a challenge for us to, uh, you know, try to take some things away from them. Go ahead, Danny P. You guys <clears throat> played much better Saturday, obviously. How, how much of that do you think? was getting exams behind them and they didn't have that on their mind and seemed to play, play a lot more loose. And was that a factor at all, you think? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's something you'd probably have to ask the players, um, you know, about that stress and if that played a part in it uh, at all. But um, it was it was much needed, you know, just the win in general and, you know, it to be stress-free for the most part um, certainly was a, a welcomed um, game, you know, for, for – our program, uh, including, you know, the coaches. And um, just for our team to see the ball go through the net like that, you know, ever since the Arizona State game, we, we hadn't shot the ball, um, you know, like that since that game. And um, it seems as if, like, the floodgates opened. And, you know, what you hope is at this point, you know, something like that would just, you know, um, 
make them feel good, you know, and, and play with even more confidence um, going forward. we got another opportunity Wednesday to play in our own arena in front of our <clears throat> fans, and we're hoping to, uh, you know, ride that uh, momentum that we created. Got time for a couple more. We'll go back to Justin. Going, going back to Tolu, there have been a couple times this year where I've seen him, you know, yell out to, to Jimmy or Guy or somebody from the bench. How much do you think – I mean, obviously you want him on the court, but how much do you think just him seeing the game from, from his perspective that he's in right now can, can benefit him even with all his experience and stuff? Yeah, he's been great that way. Um, you know, he's had the, the right per personality, I guess. Uh, you know, he's not talking down to anyone. He's encouraging um, not just, you know, Tolu and Guy, but, but other players as well. I know he's been a, a real friend to, um, you know, Murph as he's battled back, you know, from his injury. And now he's trying to, you know, earn minutes uh, on the court and they're real close. And, um, I can hear him, you know, talking to him in practice quite a bit and encouraging him. But um, I, I think I've seen him uh, he even grow that way um, in terms of understanding what a leader is and, and how he can help, you know, other players because of the respect that he's earned, not only, you know, with his play, but just with his approach and mindset on a daily basis. And um, he's built real good relationships with a lot of the players. And certainly uh, it's one thing to lead when you're not able to play. And now, you know, as he transitions back, we're hoping that um, he can give us a boost that way too.